up, ladies and dickheads? Baker X D Rock here. And uh, we're accompanied by good old Brian Spielwell right here. And uh, got a little special vid for you today. Oh, oh god damn fucking bumps. So we're hitting up a place I didn't even know existed until two days ago. And then once I found out it existed, I found it out all these cool, yeah, found it out. I said found it out. We found out a bunch of cool things about it, including one of my favorite things, UFO ropes. And uh, and uh, what we're going to is a place called Norton Air Force Base. Some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. And I went ahead and busted the link hunt and put some notes down. Speaking of the notes, I need to replace them. This is the second ramp I've tried to get on and it's closed too. Holy shit. Damn, I can't even get these notes to stay still. YouTube the history of flat earth by what the fuck this guy's a flat earther right there in that car <laughs> ah, Flat earther so uh, this place began as a SB municipal airport under the Army Air Corps in 1941 and uh, Basically its initial objective was to train 30,000 pilots around World War II time and uh, that's the the basically the beginnings of the Norton Air Force Base. Thank you. Finally. There goes my detailed notes of where we're going. Well, I just physically wrote them down, so I, I still got them in my dome chrome. So I know in 1942, they then uh, renamed it to the Army Air Corps base, I believe. See, this sucks ass. I had my fucking, I, I wrote all those down this morning, did all that research. And then in the 1950s, it became Norton Air Force Base, named after Captain uh, Leland Norton, who was actually a San Bernardino native and was actually a hero because in France, he got uh, unfortunately hit by German gunfire, anti-aircraft fire, and he was like pretty much mortally wounded. And as his plane was crashing down, he managed to keep control of it long enough to uh, let quite a bit of his comrades escape out the back in the hatch and shit and uh, and uh, unfortunately he perished with his aircraft and then they uh, respectfully named it Norton Air Force Base after Captain Leland Norton but the real mystery here is UFOs as I was doing my research with this I came across this testimony from an old um, a guy, he was a uh, Lieutenant Colonel um, John Williams, I believe. Or See, I had my notes. I'm going to have to... Oh, my God. He just pointed out this traffic right here. <laughs> oh, man. What the hell is going on in this place? So, apparently, this Air Force Base housed a secret facility that, um, that housed a secret UFO. And under this guy's, there's a video, I'm going to go ahead and link you guys to it in the pin comment below, where the guy tells the story about this place and the facility there. And there was a hidden facility on base that um, presumably housed a uh, UFO and some like anti-gravitational like aircraft and shit. 
and he also mentioned how the government was spending more money than any other project in the government's history on anti-gravitational um, uh, aircraft. Oh, there's a fire truck right there. It's probably an accident. So when I came across that, and that was all here in San Bernardino, when I came across that, I was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. my interests were piqued. So fast forward to today. Oh yeah, by the way, that um, Air Force Base went out of commission in 1988, I believe. They deemed it for closure, then they actually closed it in 1994. So it's been pretty much closed since 1994. It's just, there, you could still see remnants of like the barracks and shit out in the fields. They're like torn down and shit. And then uh, fast forward to about a few years ago and they built the, uh, the museum for it. And uh, this place is actually ran and uh, maintained by people that were actually stationed here. So um, I'm excited to ask them about uh, oh shit about UFO shit and see if they even like talk about it or anything. Because I had no idea there was like UFO shit going on in San Bernardino of all places. And this ain't some little mushroom nut saying all this shit too. This was a legit lieutenant colonel that was actually stationed there and ran a lot of the projects on the base. This fucking bike is getting warm just sitting here. The big motor is like, come on, bitch. I wrote all these notes to talk about while we we're going. They flew off on the on ramp. <laughs> And here is the location of the old Air Force Base. So back in the day, this would be the spot. All the old airmen and shit would be stationed here. All the, the city was prosperous. All the ladies here were getting those Air Force cream pies from all the soldiers in town. Life was great. And as soon as they closed this down, that's when the city became the shithole that it is today. I'm actually extremely curious to even see if there's even a mention of UFOs on this place, if that's even a thing. I can't believe I've never known this thing existed. Because I love this kind of stuff and history ropes. All the gold guard posts even. That's cool. All oh, this water tower right here. There's a fucking video that's on YouTube from the 80s of a guy stationed on top of a hangar up there. And they were standing and they zoomed in on that water hangar. It's still fucking there. That's cool as shit. event center this is it okay oh that's an actual section of the Berlin Wall right there that red wall that's fucking sick there it is right there wow this thing's like hidden they need to put like something on the street telling you that this is a damn museum because you not only have to come in you have to wrap around the damn building to even see it all right what's your what's your name sir my name's Paul Minert. Pa Paul Minert. Okay. All right, so what, what do you got to, what, what's uh, special okay, about this, this area? This is an old mailbox, and what we use this for is people bring their unserviceable flags here. Oh, okay. And they deposit them here, and then we go ahead and have them uh, destroyed. Oh, so it's a, basically a legitimate spot for people to uh, dispose of their flags right. properly. I got right. you. This is our Berlin Wall over here, and we got this actually from the internet. Oh, really? That's where this came from. Yeah. Did somebody contact one, you guys about it? Yes. One of the local officials in the area went ahead and he bought two. There's one in northern San Bernardino in a park, and then there is this one here. And one of the reasons that we have the Berlin Wall, besides us being the museum, Norton Air Force Base supported the Berlin Wall in that the airplanes that they used during the Berlin Wall were overhauled here at Norton. Oh, okay. That's, okay. that's awesome. Now this is what Bob was talking about. And this is, if you come this way here gotcha. first. And that's the airplane that was the first 141 to fly into Gai Lam Airport in North Vietnam to bring out the first load of the POWs. Oh, so it was like a rescue plane, huh? That brought them all home? Right. That's why it has the Red Cross on the tail. Oh, it's beautiful. I didn't know that. That's, that's a cool little symbol. Yeah. And this is a memorial for the 
military and also the civilians that were stationed here at Norton Air Force Base. I like uh, how I like the little touches, like mm -hmm. like owned the jet, loadmaster, like right. there's a little a little story of them. Right, and that's so we can. This is part of our legacy for exactly. being here. We can say that we were here. Exactly. So if you let me come around here, you'll see that uh, we not only have the people that were stationed here, but we also have people like uh, Pat Tillman, who was killed in action in 2004 and there are his parents brick there I have a brick here and my twin brother and this is we'll just say that this says that we were here at North Netflix space that's beautiful I like that legacy. I like uh, that especially in today's age in the city right? it's, a, it's a beautiful landmark at least showing what it will a beautiful now, little what memorial. we're getting ready to do is next weekend we're going to go ahead and cement all these bricks in so that's why the little dots are on them so they can go back into the uh, place where we where we have them basically keeping them in order keeping them in order right yeah and this is similar to that that yes it's, got it's like exactly and we're, we use the same uh, contractor to do these bricks as the same ones over there. Beautiful, I like yeah. that. And uh, what about the Palm Meadows? Who would that gentleman be? Uh, that was our golf course. Oh, your golf course, okay. Right, and then the other... Uh, so you had a golf course on base? We had a golf course. Oh, that's cool. That's where Amazon is now. That's where Palm Golf Colin them. And then this is the uh, this sat in front of wing headquarters. Now, is the story true that I heard that um, Captain Leland uh, was struck by German anti-aircraft fire right. and that he maneuvered his plane enough for his comrades on the plane to right. be able to escape while he... That's right. That's right, okay. That's right. I saw that before he came. I thought that was... Yeah. That's cool that they were able to like, to rename that him because he was a native here, right? In San Bernardino? Uh -huh. Yep. And he's buried here in San Bernardino. Yeah, Mount View Cemetery, yep. right? That's right. That's where, uh, yeah, there's a, ra a famous guitarist, I think, buried there, too, as oh, well. Really? Randy Rhodes of uh -huh. Ozzy Osbourne, if you're yeah. familiar with the name. Yeah, yeah. I am. And that's good that you read up before you came out here. Yeah, I that's like to wonderful. do that. Yeah, I love doing that. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm big on history. I love history, especially of where I live, of course. <laughs> right. I think it's cool something like this is in the backyard kind of deal. So one thing I want to point out is it was a little difficult no, knowing this place was here, thankfully, because of Google Maps, it pinpointed the location, but we are on the corner of 3rd and Del Rosa Avenue, right? right? And then basically you'll pull in the first left you see and then wrap around the parking lot and then you'll see the uh, museum right up front. This is Kathy Lasauce and she was one of the first 10 female pilots in the Air Force. First 10 in the history, huh? First 10 in the history. Uh, she came here about 1979, and then she became an aircraft commander, and she also became an instructor pilot. And then Kathy left here and went to, was here about three years, went to Washington, D.C., and flew presidential support and she flew people like some of the dignitaries around and then she went on to the Pentagon. Wow, quite the uh -huh. successful life there. Right, and then from there she retired. And then that's her up there on that picture? And that's up there, that's her uh, school picture. Oh wow. This is one of our 141s, 614. It was taking off out of Australia. The number three engine blew up at uh, the shrapnel from number three engine uh, went into number four and shut that down. Uh, the shrapnel from the engine went into the cargo compartment. There was smoke in the cargo compartment and also in the cockpit. But they were able to land the airplane back at the airport. With they two had engines? Just taken off with two engines. Jeez. Right. And that's 614. And those were pilots out of here? Pilots out of here. Oh wow! On the airplane. Now here's a picture of the one of our 141s supporting the Thunderbirds. Awesome. And then the is this the presidential plane yes. that's landed here? Yeah. 
they brought that in here so they could dismantle one and take it to the Reagan Library. Oh, so that's an old Air Force one? Or? Yeah, yeah the oh. old Air Force one. Okay. And here they are. These are different pictures here where they dismantled the airplane and they trucked it over the road. Screen pausers, you could pause right there. Now, one of the missions we had, we used to fly to Antarctica. Antarctica? Antarctica, yes, to draw oh. supplies. This picture here, they are, the crew is planning their mission. And then when you go up to the next picture, that's, they used to carry extra crew members with them because of the, the lighting and the weather. The top picture, they're hauling, they're loading the cargo on the airplane that they're taking to Antarctica. I couldn't picture you flying to Antarctica, that'd be scary. And this <laughs> picture over here is where they're dropping the cargo out. They're all got their parkas on and that because it's so cold. Oh and yeah, I can imagine. Putting the cargo out the, uh, out that's, the door. That's so awesome. And down here is a picture of them after they've completed the mission. And that's how they used to park the airplanes. That's some precise parking there. Uh-huh. This is an air deflector door. I was just talking about the paratroops dropping out. This door would come out in flight. And what did it do? It would air deflect the, do the air coming off the side of the airplane so they could get out. Oh, so they can jump out safely, basically? Right. Oh, wow. So you learn something new every day right there. Are these various units? Various different units. So are you familiar with how um, how many soldiers were on the base, like when it was in its prime? Like how many were on, on location? Uh, I think I heard 12,000. 12,000? Okay. Yeah. Both uh, civilians and military. Okay. Yeah. This gives you an idea. The Norton Air Force Base, the, all the military bases are like a city in itself. So they have different uh, functions or activities showing you what what went on like the chapel service and the chapel is still here today and social actions so we had all kinds of different activities this is one of the uniforms this would be a uniform that they would wear yeah, during flight, flight? Suit. Yep, flight suit. a lot of stuff going on on the seat when you really look at it right pocket wise and all the stuff going on right. and everything that's cool I'm sure every little spot has its function. <laughs> it, does. it does. Yeah. It does. This gives you an idea of the type of toolboxes that the guy mechanics used to carry. And this was what they would work on the aircraft with? Right. And they call it a doghouse toolbox. Looks like an old school tackle box. Well, and this is a box that the photographers used to carry. And this unit here, the 1361st Photo Squadron, they did secret photography and what they used to do is take pictures of the atomic blast that they had out in the desert. Well, that's one of the toolboxes that they used. That's quite a camera bag for back then. Right. And then these pictures here are showing Norton. When Norton was a depot. We used to overhaul engines. Oh yeah, I read uh, that this was one out of three places that was able to work on big jet engines or right. something of that sort. So that gives you an idea in the engine shop. Now I um I saw on um online there was a guy, a lieutenant colonel mm -hmm. named John Williams. Are you familiar with that name? No. He was he mentioned that there was a facility here that housed a UFO or something like that. You ever I, heard anything of that sort no, before? I never have. And he was an actual personnel here, so I was yep. wanting to question if you guys heard about the no. being here or anything no, like that. Uh, in fact, we talk about it occasionally about it, and the times here. Any cool UFO conspiracy theories no, you can say? Uh -uh. Nothing, Nothing of that nature? <laughs> this is a windshield from one of the airplanes. That's the pilot's windshield. He's hiding something. This is the pilot's yoke that they turn the airplane with. And then next to it is the uh, landing gear, landing gear handle. And this instruments for the oxygen that they would breathe, that the pilots and that would breathe in the airplane. And then at one time, 
guys were allowed to smoke on the airplane. So these oh, are their ash trays. Well, it looks like some from a Cadillac. Here, there you go. Oh yeah. And that was the ash tray. Oh geez, that's <laughs> that thing looks like it was quite used even. Smoke weed every day. Not now. And you even got a little training guide there. This is one of the World War II uniforms that they used to wear. That looks all kinds of vintage. Mm -hmm. This is Norton in its earlier days. This is one of the hangars that they're building Yeah, in the very beginning. This was one of the main gates that people used to go through. And these are chalks, what we call chalks, and that's what they used to... Uh, when they parked the airplane, then that's what they do so the airplane wouldn't move. And that's a picture of Norton. In the earlier days, you don't see the 10 or the 210 freeways in there. Yeah, definitely. So it's quite a ways. And then this tells the story about when he was shot down. It gives you an idea of the... And all these, ever all these were like donated from oh yeah, soldiers this has well. all been donated. And those are all the awards and decorations that we could wear if we were presented to us. So, yeah. And these are the and that's air police. Would that be the MP equipment? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The Air Force had an all-female band. The girls, when they were at Lackland Air Force Base, where they were going through basic training, if they were selected to go into the band, then that's what they did while they were in. The WAF band was in the Air Force from 1951 to 61. They were stationed here in 58 to 61. The people donated. And this will give you an idea down here, what we call it, sea rations. So you get an idea of what was in the cans. You know, peaches and canned Spam. Old and, MRE, uh, basically? Yep, yeah, old MREs. Wow. Now you talk about secret stuff that was going on here at Norton. We had a detachment, that Six, which had the jigs and the fixtures and that's what you use to build the airplane, the SR-71. Oh. So the, the, they would bring the airplane in for the air shows, and this is the picture of the people here from that six, and the pilot, and the electronics warfare officer. I'm digging that, that picture of that SR-71 in like the fog right there. Uh-huh. Oh, and then there's like manuals for it? Yeah. Some of the different manuals for it, right? Operation Homecoming. You saw the model outside of 177. Well, that was the first airplane to land at Guy Lam Airport. Here they are. That's a picture of 177. And that's a picture of the guys on the first airplane. Oh wow! Oh yeah. yeah, you can see them all like all the looks on their face, face right. of relief. Right. The next here is a list of the POWs that were on the first airplane. Okay. The oldest POWs came out on the first airplane. Now over here is a picture of Ray Merrick, and this is Robbie Reisner, and here they're being escorted to the 141, and this is at Guy Lam Airport. Here they're having, they flew them to Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines for medical treatment and, and new uniforms and stuff like that. And here they are, they're sitting down and having their first meal. And what do you think the guys wanted to eat? Lobster and steak. Hamburgers <laughs> and milk. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. But I don't think that's what they're eating. And then on the bottom picture, what they do is after they went to, to the Philippines, then they would fly them, they flew through, hit them, and then they bring them to their regional, regional 
hospitals, and this is a picture of them at March Air Force Base. Yeah, and those are the pictures of them being released in uh, Hanoi. One of the buildings they've just finally torn down at Norton is the old combat camera building. Oh. Uh, okay? Uh -huh. And these are some of the, uh, give you an idea of their patch and hats. And these are the cameras that they used to use when they used to go and take pictures. Old Pentex. Yeah, Pentex. And this is Gary Underwood's uniform. Give you an idea of an officer's uniform. And he was the base and finally the wing commander for the closure of North. I like the detail all the way down to the pins. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this just shows you an enlisted mess dress uniform. Yeah. And they they have the miniature medals on there, and this is, shows you a proposal uh, of the idea of during the Cold War, the idea of hauling missiles around so the enemy couldn't find them. So they came up with this idea. They had I think five of them, and they hauled them around all over the Southwest. That's awesome. Yeah, where they could launch the missile. This over here is a party suit. Uh, what the officers, the officers wore when they used to have their parties, and like in Thailand, places like in Thailand. Yep. And this is the pair of just utility uniforms for the mechanics, and that used to wear. This is a picture of before Norton was closed. They got together and had a group picture taken. This is what they wore in Vietnam and Thailand. Now, Bob Turner, who belongs to the museum, he was like the fire chief for the Air Force here at Norton Air Force Base. And this is his uniform. And that's an old fire bottle that we used to use. And then these are some of the different badges that he probably would have worn, that he would have worn. And this is a display. One of the ladies from the area had, was over there at the same time that they were tearing down the Berlin Wall. Uh, you know. That's cool. She was in charge of the 68th Aeromedical Evac Squadron. And this is, this is her dress uniform over here. Quite dressy. Mm -hmm. Now, not only did Norton have the 63rd, but we also had an associate wing here, which was originally the 944th MAG, and then it turned into the 445th MAW, Military Airlift Wing. And they did basically the same thing that the active duty did. They flew the same missions and everything. Some of them were here full time and others were what they considered part timers in that they'd be here, come here for like a weekend and do their job to stay proficient and then they go, then they go back home. We wanted to honor the WASP and so we, one of the ones in the local area was Alma Fornell and Alma uh, flew, uh, she went through uh, training because there was such a shortage of MIM pilots that that's why they had the WASP. Uh, and so this is a picture of Alma Fornell and she flew T-6 Texans and then she also flew uh, Target Toe B-26s and then they retired in the area. She met her husband when she was stationed in Florida and they 
came back here and got married, and they live in the local area. Here's, here's the 40. Now this is our Desert Shield, Desert Storm display, and in here you're seeing the different kinds of cards, playing cards, and they gave those out to the guys that were stationed, the uh, people who were stationed over there, so they could tell the difference between who was good and who was bad. And this is the engine shop we had at Norton. They're saying that they had 42 engines that were ready. And this gives you an idea of some of the different patches showing some of the different organizations that were stationed at Norton. All right, so that was the tour from that gentleman. Really nice of him. Unexpected. I wasn't expecting a whole walk around tour, but hey, man, you guys probably learned a lot from that. I just wanted to come back through and check out some of this cool shit because a lot of fucking interesting things here. All the maps, all the stuff. And you guys, man, it's free to come here. These things are awesome if you guys are interested in history and whatnot. Seeing how things worked, how things ran. These awesome ass books, literally getting to see how, what these guys actually had to read through and work through to be able to uh, maintain, build, and fly these aircrafts. Look at all this shit. My dad actually, for those of you who don't know, he was in, um, he was a military police in the Air Force actually, but he was stationed in Minot, North Dakota at like some missile silos or some shit. So I'm sure he'll be liking to see all the cool badges and shit they have here. Got tiger ropes hitting a zinger. <laughs> cool ass medals and stuff. Well guys, one last look at the Achtung Sea Verlassen Jet Sea West Berlin Wall. I think this is just so fucking cool to see like an actual piece of the Berlin Wall like in person. That's just so dope. Oh, well, they got the flag at half mast today. Yeah, that looks so comfy, that bike. I didn't even see that dip. That hurt. Well, I hope that museum was entertaining for you guys as it was for me i fucking i'm all over those historical ropes especially like military shit i love like old school military stuff i love the look of like military uniforms and everything and like the art of everything back in like the 40s and 50s and shit i always like how everything looked yeah enjoyed that video it's gonna go ahead and end it there as always links are down below if you want to support a chill boy and uh, grab a keychain a shirt yada 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 and as always uh, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the fuck out of that like button and you guys have a, a real good day I'll see you guys later Yeah!